Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Here we are again. Uh, and another Bedhead Diary. Yes. We watched the last episode of the originals last night, the season finale that was on Netflix. What kind of accents do vampires and werewolves I in real life have? I don't know. I don't know. I want to suck your blood. <laughs> That's the witch accent. That's a double, double, boy, Oh, yeah, because they've got witches too. Okay. It, you know, Macbeth. And then right. oh, 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 werewolf. Oh, so love. Right. I mean, vampire shows, it can do no wrong. I love them. Yeah. Well, it's my, it's my guilty. So they get to have whatever accents guilty they want. Guilty pleasure. Uh, dramas. Other people's dramas and how not to get. <laughs> okay. So staying neutral is the key. To handling and dealing with other people's dramas. Realize, first of all, it's a drama. This topic comes from a couple of different questions. So this is a repeated question. We've been getting one. How do I cope with a manager I don't like? And how do I detach? Deal with family dramas. We thought we'd throw in another one. How to deal with client drama as a therapist or as a counselor or as a healer, coach, or fill in the blank. Any kind of healing profession. We see about uh, 25 to 30 people. clients a week and heavy. And we get asked a lot by other people in healing professions. We coach a lot of coaches and right. a lot of healers. How do you deal with it? How do you let go of other people's stuff? When you're dealing, especially with heavy, intense emotions and energy and whatever it happens to be, you would inundate yourself, put yourself in a position where you basically can't do your job anymore if you take on other people's stuff. Now, there's a trick to this because you can't really be effective as a healer or a friend or a family member if you detach so much that you don't care, you're just You don't like, want to put up the wall, uh -huh, you don't want to cut mm -hmm. everything off. Like you're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, not my drama, don't talk to me, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you're cutting yourself off from your emotions, so. And your ability to help them at all. First, this is what people do wrong in uh, healing professions or in your family or in the workplace, is you try to process other people's emotions. You can be present with somebody, fully present with someone in Absolutely the moment, in it. cry with them, feel with them, help them through their stuff, be compassionate. But when they go off in their space and you go off in your space, it's like, okay, this is mine. This is yours. Not my stuff. You don't need go. to keep. And whenever you find yourself caught up in somebody else's drama, caught up in somebody else's situation, realize that you're the one that's putting your energy in their field. This goes to after the person is out of your realm of awareness, you continue to worry about them. You continue to try to process their emotions. You can't do that. Whether it's at work, whether it's with a client, whether it's, it's a family member, family drama, they have to process their own stuff. You can help them not at all by trying to process their emotions. And let's just say, for example, that you could, that you could absolutely take on all their stuff and heal for them. It's not going to work for them because they didn't do it. This is another example of how you give your power away in relationships. Overextending. You try to make another person's story your story. So we were talking about compassion. And what we're talking about as far as compassion goes is compassionate neutrality. Detached compassion where you're still all up in it while you're helping somebody out. And then once they're done, once you're done, letting go. We cry with our clients. We, we mm -hmm. hold them. We, we go through their, all of this stuff, but then when they're gone, we, we basically put it back on them to do the rest of their work. Right. Because if we held on to it, we wouldn't be able to help some anybody people else in the week, your life, your family, your people at work. Um, one of the questions was at dealing with a manager you don't like, right? If they're getting under your skin, they're pushing a button. Work on the button. So what is it that they're triggering in you? And when you work on your part, then you can more clearly see what their story is and how they're reacting and what they've got going on and realize that it really isn't your story. It's not your drama. With people you don't like, first look at why you don't like them. And number two, look at them in a really neutral way. I'm not deciding when the client comes in, do I like this person? Do I not like this person? Would we be friends? Are they trying to hide something? I'm not assessing that. I'm assessing in a really neutral way, where are they hurting and where can I help them figure out why they're hurting and how to help them fix it within themselves? When you're in that neutral place, you get to see more clearly what their situation is and how you can possibly help them by holding space. For me as a therapist, I'm taking my personal emotions completely out of it because yep. if you don't do that, the person might feel- You're gonna be reactionary. 
And this is a good place to be because it helps you be non-judgmental at all with the person and you're able to see them clearly. So if people that you don't like, you look at them in a neutral way. Okay, why do I not like them? But why are they irritating? So unfortunately, people that are, are difficult in our family and are, are at work are reacting from their wounded places as well. Right. So if we're responding from our wounded place, it becomes very difficult to engage you know, in any kind of communication or for anybody to help anybody else. And to function in a healthy way at work or in a family. Family. Realize that it's a Shakespeare drama and with any play you've got to realize what part you're playing and if you realize what part you're playing and what kind of a story it is you get to change your role. Don't take it so personal. If you don't take it personal then you can you can maintain your clarity while you're in the middle of a situation whether it's family whether it's work whatever. Realize they're not reacting to you. That's it. So neutrality and clarity um, are key to having compassion in the moment for somebody that's not necessarily pleasant to be around but you can hold your center and be neutral and not take on that emotion and then you're stronger so that is one another way that you give your power away every day to a situation is by letting your emotion get sucked in and losing your center <laughs> so you can still be compassion compassionate in the middle of a sticky situation at work um, all right so thank you again for the um, Question. For the topics, for the topics. comments, for everything that you brought. I feel like I, I, I didn't have an intense enough bed head this morning, so we're just going to do this. Um, a little hint. A little hint, since we've been talking about TV shows and watching, sometimes what I kind of practice but to get into that state, because there was a time in my life when I had a very hard time detaching, um, is to look at it like you're in a movie and you're watching a play and you're watching other people. And that kind of permits you, uh, allows you to feel the emotion, understand the emotion, but know that you are not a part of it. Make sense? Yeah. Thank you again for watching, making us part of your daily routine. So go to YouTube, pick out your favorite Bedhead Diary that's already up there, and comment on that and share it with the world.